Dave Parody here with another slide makeover video podcast based on the ideas in my book, The Visual Slide Revolution. Today we're going to take a look at animation and animation can be very helpful in helping our audience understand our message, but only if we use it appropriately. Here's the slide I'm uh, looking at today. So this is a, a slide that was sent to me uh, for a workshop and what they've done here is they have uh, tried to use animation um, but not totally successfully. Here's what happens first and then we uh, advance. And you notice how that sort of uh, scrolls up from the bottom. The next one scrolls up from the bottom. The next one, the fourth one, and the final one. Now, what are the challenges here? Well, first of all, you have the chevrons across the top, which are there at the start. Instead of building each chevron with the list of items that relate to it, the audience is left wondering, okay, what's going on with the rest of the chevrons? When they build each of these uh, columns, it builds from the bottom. The challenge with that is people don't read from the bottom up. They read from the top down. So when we animate it in an opposite way, people get confused because it's not in context it doesn't fit with what they expect finally we uh, see all of the items for each column come on at the same time it makes it harder to uh, discuss each item individually with the audience so here's how i redid the slide oh uh, the reason that this uh, is is sometimes challenging is because uh, the people who put this slide together uh, were using some of the smart art that comes with PowerPoint 2007 and above. And we'll see some of the challenges that that, that can have ha have when we look at the lessons. So let's look at the slide uh, that I did. So we have the same action plan, but we first talked about, okay, so what are the immediate things that we're going to do? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select a builder, etc., etc. We talk about that, then we can talk about the next item, then we can talk about the next item. So we've now built each item individually for just this column. Then we say, okay, what are we going to do in the mid-2010 part of the, the plan? Well, first we do this, and then again, each one is built individually and discussed individually with the audience. We bring the next one on. Again, each one is done individually. Bring the fourth one on, individual discussions, and our final one comes on and we have our two items that we talk about there. So what we've done here is we have built each uh, of the categories by putting the title in the chevron and then each item is individually built so we can have that discussion with the audience. It makes it far easier to understand we build from top to bottom which is what people expect. Now because this was done with smart art what I had to do is I actually had to break it apart uh, break the items apart, ungroup them in order to do the animation properly. So let's take a look at the, the lessons that we can learn before we get there. Just a reminder, more information out the, about the book at www.visualslideRevolution.com. More information on my training, consulting, uh, other books, videos, other resources. My main website, www.thinkoutsidetheslide.com. So our lessons for using animation to help our audiences understand our message better. First of all, be careful if you're going to use smart art. It can look very attractive. The challenge is when we try to animate it, sometimes it's been grouped and it doesn't allow us to animate it in a way that the audience understands it. It gives them either too much or it brings too much on at the same time for us to have that clear discussion with the audience. Then, when you have related items, as we did in this case, a title and some individual points we wanted to come across, make sure you build those together in some sort of uh, order instead of having, let's say, all the titles on as we had in the original slide here. Movement is not something that you should just use because it looks fun. Use it only when it adds to the message. When they had those uh, uh, pieces of text flying up or, or sort of scrolling up from the bottom. There was actually no purpose to that movement. I, I think movement is a good thing to have if there's a purpose to it. So if you have an arrow moving in a particular direction because you want to show flow in that direction, that's appropriate movement and it adds to the message. But if it doesn't add to the message, please don't have movement animation. The final lesson always try to build your points that you're going to discuss with your audience build them one by one why so you can focus the discussion and in fact this is the fifth 
step in my five-step quick method in the book. And the final K stands for keep focus. And we keep the focus of the audience by building our points one by one. And animation does that for us. So when you're looking at your uh, visuals and you're animating them, make sure you keep these lessons in mind to make sure the animation helps your audience understand the message. This has been Dave Parody with another Slide Makeover video podcast.